Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Miss Robinson and I am back with another Mac video for you guys. Today we are going to re associate ourselves with the associative property. We first met the associative property or learned about the associative property in chapter two when we were dealing with addition. And what we learned in that chapter is that the associative property says the way that you group your add-ins will not change the sum. And when you we use this when we were dealing with more than two add-ins. Well, the associative property of multiplication says the exact same thing. The order in which or the way that you group your factors will not change the product. Now it's important to know that the associative property of multiplication is also sometimes called the grouping property. So all we're gonna do today is refresh our memory on how the associative property works and instead of applying it to addition like we did in chapter two, we're going to apply it to multiplication since that's what we are now focusing on. The other thing that we're gonna add to this is just really making sure that we know that anytime you're given a math problem that has multiple numbers numbers or parentheses, whatever is in the parentheses is to be done first. You must do that first. And I know that you guys are really going to learn about your order of operations down the line in fourth and fifth grade, but we're just kind of getting our feet wet with it in third grade. So what we're going to learn is anytime you see something in parentheses, the rule is that part of the problem has to be completed first. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my whiteboard, give you guys a few examples. I don't think it's going to take very long because we're just going to show ourselves that grouping our factors in different orders will not change the product. And then I'll come back with closing thoughts and we'll be done for this video. So let me set up my whiteboard and I will see you guys in just a second. Alrighty, here we have our first example. We have in parentheses three times two times five. As I said in the intro, now we are at a point in our learning that we have to know that whenever we're given a problem that involves parentheses, whatever is shown in the parentheses must be done first. So as this problem is currently written, we have to solve three times two first and then multiply that product by five. But let's say that I am not comfortable doing this first. Maybe I don't know my threes or I just don't feel confident in doing that first. I can go ahead and change the grouping of this problem. Right now the factors three and two are grouped together and that's giving me a little bit of anxiety or making me feel not quite confident just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and change the grouping. I'm going to rewrite this to say in parentheses five times two because I feel really good about my facts of five and my facts of two and I'm going to multiply that by three. Now notice I still have the same factors. I still have five, two, and three, but they're just in different orders. In the original problem, the three was there, but now in my rewritten problem using the associative property, it's there. The original problem, the two is in the parentheses. I've kept that in the parentheses. And then in the original problem, the factor five is outside of the parentheses, but now I've grouped it with the two. My factors are the same, the grouping has just changed. So following the rules, I'm gonna now solve what's in the parentheses first. And that's easy, I know that five times two is 10, and then I'm gonna multiply that product by the remaining factor, which is three, and that is super easy. I know my facts of 10 for sure, and I know that 10 times three, and let me move my board back just a little bit, 10 times three is going to be 30. So I know that three times two times five is going to equal 30 because I chose to change the grouping using the associative property. Alrighty, here we have our second example and notice that in the second example, they haven't grouped any of your factors together just yet. They're leaving it up to you. So this problem is two times seven times two. So immediately I know well, I definitely wanna group my factors two together because I know my twos like the back of my hand. So I'm gonna do two times two and I'm going to multiply that by seven. Now, following the rules of parentheses, I'm gonna go ahead and solve this section first. So two times two is four. I'm gonna bring down my multiplication symbol that's left, and then the last factor, which is seven. Now I have four times seven. And because I love relying on what I have learned in previous lessons to help me out, I'm gonna go ahead and use the double strategy to solve four times seven. I know that seven times two is gonna be 14, and I'm just gonna double 14 
and that's going to give me 14 plus 14 and I know that that's going to be 28. So that tells me that 2 times 7 times 2 is going to be 28. We'll do one more example. Alrighty, we have another example, 2 times 9 times 3. Again, in this one, they haven't grouped it for us. They're leaving it up to us. So I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to pull the factor 2 and 3 together because I think that those will be my easiest ones to solve. So I'm going to put those in parentheses so that they are grouped together, and I'm going to multiply that product by 9. Making sure to follow the rule of whatever's in the parentheses must be done first, I'm going to multiply 2 times 3, which is going to be 6, and then I'm going to multiply that by 9. Luckily for me, I know my facts of 6, so I am going to use 6 times 9. That is going to be 54. And even if I didn't know my facts of 9, I could use the distributive property, and instead of doing 6 times 9, I could do 6 times 5, plus six times four, because those are a little bit easier for me. And then this would give me 30. That would be 24, even though the writing is a little bit messy. And then that would also give me a product of 54. So I know then that two times nine times three is going to be 54. So remember the key is always you look at the numbers and you decide what is easiest for you. What's going to be the nicest way to set up this problem so that your mind can solve it efficiently? Keep in mind that what's nice and easy for you may be different from someone else. So everybody may choose to group their problem a little bit differently. So you just got to focus on making the problem work for you. So that is going to be our last example in this particular lesson. Let me flip the camera around, give you some closing thoughts, and then we will be all done for the day. All right, so those are your quick examples looking at the associative property, this time using multiplication. Hopefully that felt a little familiar to you guys from chapter two. Basically, we just wanna make sure that we remember that anytime you see something in parentheses, you must do those parentheses first. And the reason that we use the associative property, whether it's for addition or subtraction, is we're just trying to make things more efficient for our minds, easier for our minds to work with. So if you have a set of factors that you know more readily than others, then that may affect how you choose to group your factors when dealing with the associative property. So if this video was helpful to you guys, please, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.